All right, let's talk about some more tests for numerical series and whether they converge. The last video you should have watched should have explained the nth term test that shows whether a series diverges or if it has a chance to converge. Well, what if you get to the point where you're like, okay, it passes the nth term test, so it has a chance of converging. How can I actually prove that it does converge? That's what the rest of these are going to be about. So if it passes the nth term test, meaning it might converge, then you have to find another test to guarantee convergence. And one of those is called the integral test. So the integral test says, suppose that the summation of a series um, is a positive term series and that f is a positive value decreasing continuous function for x is greater than or equal to 1. If f of n equals a sub n for all integers n greater than or equal to 1, then the series and the improper integral below either both converge or both diverge. Um, what? Here's what that says. It says, you know what? A sigma and an integral are really related. So if I want to know whether the sum of a series is convergent, I can determine whether the integral using that same general term is convergent. And if the integral converges, then so does the series. So if you want to find out if a series converges, figure out if the integral has a finite value. Now, quick caveat the value of the integral is not equal to the value of the series. It's just that if the integral has finite value, then the series does too. What value is it? It depends. Okay, so let's come down here. Now, on the previous page, we had that said that 6 over 4n minus 1 as n goes to infinity heads towards 0. So it has a Pardon me, hiccup, chance to converge. If I really want to know if it converges or not, I'm going to take the integral from 1 to infinity of 6 over 4x minus 1 and try to evaluate that. Well, this is an improper integral, so it's a good time to remind ourselves that when we have that, I need to rewrite this as the limit as b approaches infinity from 1 to b of 6 over 4x minus 1. The antiderivative of 6 over 4x minus 1 is going to be one of those ln's, so it's going to be 6 fourths ln absolute value of 4x minus 1 from 1 to b as b approaches infinity. And so that's going to be 3 halves ln 4b minus 1 minus 3 halves ln 4 minus 1 as b approaches infinity. So as b approaches infinity here, this is going to be 3 halves times the ln of infinity, that's infinity, minus 3 halves ln 3, which is just a number. So this is infinity. Since my integral diverged, then I know the series diverges. So since the integral diverges, the series diverges as well. Okay, let's try it with another one. So if we go over here, we have ln n over n. Well, the first test I want to do to decide whether this might even converge at all is do the nth term test. So as n approaches infinity, ln n over n, well, that's going to get me infinity over infinity. Oh, I'm going to have to try L'Hopital. Now, we're getting toward the end of the year. Let's think about AP. If you're going to do L'Hopital on the AP, you have to break it apart. So I have to show that the limit as n approaches infinity of the top does go to infinity, and that the limit as n approaches infinity for the bottom goes to infinity. So we're going to do L'Hopital. So this original limit is equal to the limit of the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom, which would be 1 over n over 1. And as n approaches infinity, that does go to 0. So by the nth term test, this thing has a chance at converging. I don't know if it converges or not, though, so I've got to figure this one out. Let's see. So I am going to take the integral from 1 to infinity of ln x over x. And then with that thing, I am going to, hmm, well, I need to write it as a limit because it's improper. 
So I might as well do that. But huh, I got a fraction there and I can't integrate a fraction a piece at a time. So I don't need to think about techniques of integration. This isn't something that I recognize, but it is a fraction. And the derivative of ln x is one over x u subs. I'm gonna use a u sub here. So I am going to say, let's let u equal ln x and then du would be one over x. And yeah, yeah, that's what I've got. So I have the integral of u du. Now, if I'm doing a u integral, I need u bounds. So when I plug one into ln x, I get zero. If I plug b into ln x, I get ln b, and that's totally okay. The limit is still allowing b to approach infinity. The antiderivative of u du is one half u squared. And so now I'm just gonna evaluate it. So I have the limit is b approaches infinity of one half b squared minus one half of zero squared. And if b approaches infinity, you know what? So does this. Now, I just grabbed two of these and honestly, I kind of wish that one of them converged, but that's gonna come up in some later videos. So I'm not that worried. If either of these had had an answer of like six or four pi or 72.8, then the uh, integral would be convergent and the series would be convergent as well. Just didn't happen this time, but that's okay. So since this is infinity, I know that this diverges. Okay, nope. All right, now let's talk about P series. So a P series, this is like a, what if I just wanted to look at it and I didn't wanna do a lot of work? That's what this test is all about. The P series test says that a series is a P series if it can be written as this, where P is a constant. So if I can rewrite my series as one over N to a power or three over n to a power or four over n to a power it doesn't matter what the numerator is if it's a constant um, then you definitely have a p series if the exponent of the denominator is greater than one it converges if the exponent of the denominator is less than or equal to one then it diverges okay so let me show you down here so using this p-series test, it says determine whether each of the series converges or diverges. All right, well, we have this one. Um, well, it looks like a p-series because I have a constant over n to a power. The power of n is 3. 3 is greater than 1. Therefore, this converges. Okay, wait a second. I just told you it converges. I'm not going to let you accept this on blatant faith. I don't care how short these videos are. I have to prove it to you. Let's go back and let me show you where the P-series test comes from. It actually comes from the integral test. So let's say the P-series test didn't exist and I had 3 over n cubed. I can say, hmm, well, let me see if 3 over x cubed converges or diverges. All right, I'm going to be silent here and just write it out and you can follow along. And that's going to be add one to the power, divide by the new power from one to b. And then this is going to be negative three halves times one over b squared plus three halves times one over one squared. When I plug b in for x and one in for x, Oh, and I forgot, I'm still doing the limit as B approaches infinity. Okay, now as B approaches infinity, this goes to zero because I have one over infinity. And three halves times one is three halves. That's three halves. Since my integral equal the value, I know that the series converges to a value. I don't know what value, but I know since the integral converged to a value, then the series does too. So the shortcut is P series test. This thing's going to converge. Now let's do it a lot faster for the next one. So I have four over 21 square root of N. You know what? Let's think of this as four over 21 times one over N to the one half. Okay. I'm really taking the sum of those terms 
And if I just ignore that coefficient, one over n to the one half, one half is not greater than one. Therefore, by the P-series test, this diverges. So big exponent on the bottom converges. Small exponent on the bottom diverges. Huh. Well, what if you're like adding or something like that? You know what? Doesn't matter because all it does is in example three, it's just shifting your series because you're really doing like a transformation. In this case, we're shifting one to the left. This still acts like a P-series. So when you look at P-series, most rational functions can be thought of as a slightly modified or combined set of p-series. So for this one, whoa. So for this one, 5 over n plus 1, you can think of it as 5 over n to the first. Is 1 greater than 1? No. No, it is not. So this diverges because I need an exponent greater than 1 on the bottom for it to converge. Okie doke. So you've learned two things. One, integral test. If you want to know if a series converges, try to throw the general term into an integral and see if you get a number. If you get a number, it converges. If not, it diverges. P-series test. If you have n to a power on the bottom and a constant on the top, if that power on the bottom is greater than one, it converges. If that power on the bottom is not greater than one, it diverges. And we are done. Da-da-da-da-da. See you later.